Okay, yeah. But have you have you used the software before? No. Then you have software. You have never not. used it before. But you have yes. a, do you have access to a computer? Yes, I do. Okay, is the software on it? No, not yet. I'll, I'll make plan to download it. Okay, okay. Because it's very good for you to practice. And uh, I will. That's the only way to. Uh, that's how video editing works. Immediately you okay. are learning a new thing, you just apply it immediately. All right, no problem. I'll download it tonight. All right, all right. Mr. Motosha, how good evening, sir? All right, um, let us move into today's class. Uh, before we start, I would like us to have a word of prayer. Good evening, yeah. sir. Yes, sir. Good evening, sir. Fine, oh, my boy. <laughs> yes, sir. I was your day. We bless God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hope you are able to practice what you did yesterday. <laughs> Not me. Really. We had a program. I just came in myself. Hey, yeah. But you have access to a computer, Adi? Hey, I just collected one. The, 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 what is it called? The hard shoe. Okay. But since morning, we went to Ibadan for a program. I just came in. Okay. Oh, well, I see that at least. But I, 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 I took all the... I took notes yesterday on the things we oh, oh, okay, sir. Okay, sir. I no don't problem. No problem, sir. Okay. All right. Sir. Yes, sir. You are welcome. Mr. Emmanuel. Good evening, sir. Hello. Good evening, sir. Yes, sir. Good evening. But you were not in class yesterday, right? Yes, um, I I thought it was, was going to be on WhatsApp. It was later I discovered that the link was for Telegram. So I okay. joined when the meeting ended. <laughs> hey, yeah, then, yeah. Yeah. Okay, but uh, the link for the for yesterday's session has been dropped on the WhatsApp group. So you can just go to it. To catch up with yesterday's class, you are welcome, sir. All right, let us pray, Father. We thank you for thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Father. We thank you for yet another opportunity to share knowledge. We thank you for day one. This is day two. We ask as we commence to inspire us and help us to make the most of this class in the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Once again, good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to day two of the video editing workshop, powered by Glorious Liberty Network and AIA Things. All right, so I'm already sharing my screen, my Adobe Premiere Pro screen. So um, I will just continue from where we stopped yesterday. We started a project yesterday to explain the interface and workspace of Adobe Premiere Pro. So please, if at any point you are not seeing my screen, just notify me so that so sometimes this telegram can switch. Yeah. All right, so yes, we stopped here yesterday. Uh, I will just do a quick recap of what we did yesterday. To is a is a basic class for beginners. So if in fact if for the whole of these sessions, the whole of this workshop, if what you can hold on to is understanding the interface, the panels, and the tools, I'm fulfilled. Because these are the most basic things. Once you are able to understand them, you can learn the other things on your own. 
In fact, you can go to YouTube and you, there are a lot of materials you can study. But you may not be able to study them well and effectively if you don't have the basic understandings. So but that's what we are doing here to explain the tools, the interface as simple as possible. So I'll give you a quick recap of what we did yesterday. So yesterday, uh, we talked about, we created new projects, we saw how to create new projects, we imported our projects, uh, videos, sounds, and pictures. And then I talked about organization. This place here is called your project panel, where my mouse is right now. So I talked about organization. If you want to edit, don't just import everything and drop. Creating a folder for each category will help you stay organized and it will make your work faster. So this is the, your project panel. And then we liken video editing to building a house. So you as a video editor, you are a builder. Imagine yourself as a builder. So, and I showed us a picture of a beautiful duplex yesterday. So imagine that's what you want to achieve. So before you start editing, you need to have a picture in mind. What do you want to achieve? What do I want to achieve with this work I'm about to do now? Is it a movie? Is it a documentary? Is it a uh, music video that you want to edit? Is it commercials? You must have that picture. You must vision what you want to achieve then it will now guide your process. So we say you as a video editor, when you see yourself as a builder, this project panel is where you bring in the materials that you need to for making your building to be a reality. So even as the name implies, project, project panel. So this place is where you import everything with the editing. So we created a folder for videos, we created a folder for sound, for pictures, depending on how bulky your project is. For example, you are editing a film and it has about 25 scenes. You can't just drop everything, you can get confused. But if you organize everything, you have a folder for scene one, scene two, subsequently up to the end, you have a folder for each scene. And then all the sound you'll be working with, you have a folder for them. It's going to help your work to be more simple. So project panel is where you bring in your building materials. So if I want to build, I need to, uh, I'm buying cement, sand, gravels, iron, everything I'm buying, this is where I'm dropping it. This project panel is where I'm bringing in my building materials. Then we have your source monitor. This is where I measure the amount of each of these building materials that I want to use. Because I'm not, I'm not going to use all at once. If I'm starting, if I'm building my fence, I can't use a, I can't use a whole trailer of a cement that I bought at once. And you start with 10 bags, then gradually. So what this place helps you to do, this source monitor, is to help you measure the amount of um, of the building materials you'll be using. And come, let me share a picture with us. I created a picture so that we can have a better understanding of it. Um, come. So. Uh, I found it. Okay. Okay, look at your screen. I hope you can all see my screen now. I hope you can all see my screen. So, uh, but I would like if in our own understanding, 
uh, Mr. Motosho, we were here yesterday. I don't know from what we did yesterday and what you are seeing on this picture, in your own understanding, if you can just summarize it. Is it the, the whole the whole? Yes, starting from the picture. Depending on how you want to explain it. Anyway, is it the whole of the like? picture, right? Yes, yes. Because this is four categories. The project panel. Yes. There is there is picture okay. on each of the panel. Yeah. There, there are okay, sir. And we have the project panel where you have all different uh, pictures and we are advised to group our work we want to work with video whatever things we want to work with we group them in that okay. group uh, in that project panel then yes. project panel we move Move to and a source monitor yes. where you can have uh, the audio as well and the image. Then from there we can now move it to uh, what is timeline. it called? to the uh, the program the timeline next. Yes, the program. Yeah, the timeline. Sorry, the timeline. Yeah. And from the timeline, uh, from the source panel. We can either move anyone we want, if only if it is only the video we want, or only the audio, or only the image, to the timeline. And the timeline is where we mix everything, just like where you have the tap running into the sand, and yes. you know you mix it up and you use it to lay brick, just like uh, the the man the the man is doing. Yeah. So, and in doing that. Make we form our uh, building, the entire building. So whatever we do in the timeline, we also show or we we, we see the effects on the uh, projects. Uh, A panel thank you, at thank the you. monitor. Yes, yes. Thank you very much. Sir. That's uh, very well explained. Very well explained. Hello, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can hear you. Hello. Yes, sir. We can hear you. We can hear you. <laughs> we can hear you. So that is um, well explained, well explained. So this is our project panel. This is where you are bringing in, as you can see, there are different building materials here. Okay, my next yeah, yeah. Just like, okay, we have the, okay. Now, I think your networks are, so I will just continue from here. Thank you, sir. From, from, from the timeline. Oh, um, no, you, you, you have, you have, you've Hello. explained it well, sir. It is well explained, sir. It is well explained. My network is bad. Yeah. I can see it. But we get your explanation, sir. It is well explained. It is well explained. Thank you, sir. Okay. Okay, so let's continue. So this is a um, project panel. You can see gravels, um, sand, cement, iron. So everything you'll be using for your project, you bring them, you import them into the project panel. Then you, your source monitor, when you double click on anything on your project panel it goes to your source monitor so on your source monitor is where you measure is where you measure as there is sand here there is cement 
So you measure the amount of sand you want to use, the amount of cement you want to use, the amount of bricks you want to use. So that's what happens in your in your source panel. This is where you measure. This is your project panel where you bring in all the materials. Your source panel is where you measure. You measure what you want to use. And then after the source panel is timeline. After measuring the amount of sand and all of that you want to use, this your timeline is where the real work is going to take place, which is what we have here. Which is what we have here. This is the timeline. This is the timeline here. As you can see, the sand, cement, and water have been mixed. So basically, that's what you are doing with your clips. You are mixing it to form a building. And then you can see the man with the bricks trying to build a house. Then your program monitor is where you preview whatever you are doing here. So the expectation is to come up with a building, right? So as they are mixing the sand, building the block, you are previewing what you are doing. So this is a, a, a building, it's still not completed. So this is where you preview your projects. Whatever you are doing here, this is where you preview it as a builder. Okay. Is the pillar okay? Is the are the fences okay? The measurements, are we following the, the vision? Are we following the diagram we have? So that's what happened on your program monitor. You preview whatever you are doing here, here. So, that's been said. Let me move to the, let me go back to Adobe Premiere Pro. All right, we are back to Adobe Premiere Pro. So, project panel, source monitor, timeline panel, program monitor. Then we have your tools, these, these are your tools. So imagine these stuffs as your shovel, hand shovel, measuring tape, whatever you be using as a builder as a tool. So in video editing, these are your this is your tools panel. And I said, out of all these tools, the most important ones are two. Selection tool, this this first one, just like your hand, you use it to pick things. So 90% of, almost 90% of when you'll be working on a Adobe Premiere Pro, this is the tool you'll be using, selection tool. Then the second one is result tool. You use it to cut. So selection tool, you can use it to move. You can see the way I'm moving this. I'll move anything. You can use it to move anything. Then result tool. Selection tool is, you can use it everywhere on the interface. The result tool, you can only use it on this timeline, you know, that's where it has used to cut your clip. So, that's that. Um, so, then yesterday we talked about bringing your clip from the source monitor here to the timeline. Then we said, uh, if you are bringing, if you, after cutting out the portion you want on the source monitor, if you drag on the old video and drop it on your timeline, it will give you video and audio. To give you video and audio. But in the case where you just want the video alone, you don't need the audio, you just click on this first icon. When you click on this first icon, you are dragging the video alone. It will come with audio. And then when you click on this second icon, you are dragging the audio alone. So depending on what you want. Depending on what you want. And um, so um, if you look at the timeline closely, you can see V1, V2, V3. There is A1, A2, A3. Now, these are called... This uh, all these V1, V2, 
it can it is infinity as much as possible it can be up to this thing it is called your video track it is called your video track while this a1 a2 a3 downward is called your audio track so all these v are your video track all these a are your audio track as you can see this is our video this one here is your video it's on the video track this one that has waves is your audio is on the audio track audio cannot stay on video track neither can video track stay on audio track and depending on how many clips you're adding or how many cameras you use you can have as many as possible on the track so um let's try it and see let's try it and see so this is your video track and then when you double click here you can enlarge it maybe you want to you need more visibility when you double click on your not on the clip now not on the clip when you double click on the clip what will happen is if you, it will go to the source monitor it will go to the source monitor which means you have uh what was there before is this video can you see the difference can you see the difference? when i double click on this clip you can see that um this is i think the whole thing here is okay but this one was there so not double clicking on the clip now when you come to the video track and double click it's going to enlarge the the track for you so it becomes bigger I make you see well depending on how you like it when you double click on the audio track to the same thing so for me mainly most times i like to double click on my audio track more because of the waves sometimes i just want to see my waves the audio waves and work on them at times so when i double click back it goes back to how it was if you like you can drag it this way still the same thing and this way however you like it so let me just let me leave it like this for now okay let me double click it i want to show us that we can have multiple videos and multiple audios on different tracks so let's come to the project panel bring in another video on this okay Let's cut it out first. Okay, so let us cut out any portion of it. So, sorry, I'm not supposed to use your cut. So what I what we do here is to mark in that the cut from the beginning. This is where I want it to start from, and then to this side, and I mark I, I mark out as I explained yesterday. So I'm bringing it to my timeline. Look at it. I've, I've i've successfully dropped it on the second track second video track second video track second audio track so but now don't do the mistake of putting it over each other let me uh, control z when i'm bringing this clip from the source and i drop it here see it's going to replace this audio anything in adobe premiere pro anything you drop on another thing it automatically cancels what was there before. Let me drop this and see. It has it will overwrite what is there before. So let me undo it. So you just drop it on the second track this way. On the second track this way. Alright, let me go to pictures. Let me go to pictures. We have our picture folder here. Let me drop another one again. So let me drop this. This is a picture. Look at it. It's on video track three. And then um, let me look for a sound. Now this is a sound on its own. I want to drop it on audio track three. So well, as you can see, these are we only have three tracks here, three audio tracks and three video tracks. Assuming I have other stops I want to drop. I see I have more clips I want to drop on the other tracks. 
what you just do is easily just come right click on the on the track here any parts right just click on any part here and click on add tracks add tracks so when i click ok i now have before can we see it was, it was at D1 to D3, A1 to A3 before. When I added four came, let's do that again and see. And I can delete tracks. And I can decide to add only one. I can decide to add only video, only the video track without the audio track, depending on what I want. So how you do that is by like speaking, add track. You can see V5 came on its own. V5 has come on its own. On the audio track too, when I right click Thank you. and add track, that's A5. So we can keep going on and on and on and on, depending on how many tracks you like to work with. So, okay, Mr. Motors, please ask your question. Okay. Thank you, sir. The yes, picture sir. You, you drop on the why is it showing on the video track? You say, sir, what did you say? The picture that you drop. Why, why is it showing on the picture? Picture. Okay, image? okay. Why is it showing on V and not on picture? Since V is for video and A is for audio. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, let me explain that. Let me explain that. So, um... This is where the timeline, this is our timeline panel. This is the way it works. It's an audio visual something. Audio visuals. So, all this part that is named A has to, to do with audio alone, sound alone, and nothing else. Nothing else can come on this A, all this A, all these tracks that have A, that's your audio tracks. Only sound, audio, those are the things that can come on it. But for this V, your video track, anything that has to do with visual, picture, video, text, anything you can see with your eyes, those are the things that we show on this uh, video track panel. So, but there's no provision for a uh, picture separate because there are still, as long as it starts to do with visuals, this is the track where they show. Because there are a lot of things, a lot. There are still special effects, texts, a lot of things. So for them to be creating separate uh, track for all of that, we make the software more confusing. So, but the thing here is basically anything that has to do with visuals, you will see it on the video track from the, all these V tracks. And anything that has to do with audio, you see it on this track. Do you understand, sir? Yes, sir. Right. Thank you. So, um, I added all these audios and all these clips just for us to see that you can add as many as possible depending on uh, what you are editing. For example, there are concerts, music concerts that they use nothing less than six cameras, for example six cameras so it's, it will be very easy to edit it on adobe premiere pro you can have v1 up to v10 and just drop everything then you start cutting to make each of the cameras to show all right let's look at this video i'm going to play it another thing adobe premiere pro gives a uh, priority to when a clip is over another clip, the one on that will not show on your program monitor, which means in your final work, it's not going to show. It's whatever, whatsoever is on top, that's what your software recognizes. So this is a video, let me play it. I'm going to play the video. Then you will see when it gets here. Now, this, this is the video. This video is what we are seeing on this monitor here. It's supposed to play to the end here, but because of the presence of these two, okay, let me even shift this one. It's going to 
hide this one and choose this one and this one because they are the ones on top. So let me play it for us to see. Okay, so can we see that? So he started playing. He started playing from here. And then it goes here. But the audio is still playing. But we can't see the the person speaking again because another clip is on it. And then there's a picture. Now you can see that the video is the video is still showing somehow because the picture, this picture that was dropped, is not the same resolution, the same size with the video. So, um, whatever is on top is what you show on your program monitor. So let me take away all of this. We are still on the timeline panel. On the, we are still on the timeline panel because this is where um uh, where the main work is taking place your timeline panel this is where the main work is taking place let me share our uh mr motosho i'm coming let me share this um screen again so that for the for those that are just joining okay so this is our timeline panel this is where we mix our cement, sand, and water, and start the building process. And this is our program monitor where we are previewing. Like this, where we are seeing the result of what we are doing, how the progress is like, how many percent close are we to the final work. So, this is our timeline. This is a picture of what is happening on the timeline. Mr. Motors, your question. Okay, thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I want to believe that what you just explained, that it is what uh, is on, it is what we have on top is what to show on the program monitor. The monitor. Yes, sir. But can we move from track to track, as in from V1 to V2? Can we can we interchange? Like if I have a video on V1 and I want it to be on V2 now, can I drag and move it to V2? If I get you right... not override. If I get you right, you have I it. If I get you right, you said... Um, I, you have, have... I have V1, V2, V3. Yes. Then, what is... Maybe the V1, the video that is on V1, that is on top, is not yes. what I actually want to display at that particular time. Yes. I want another video to move. Okay. Is, can I move it from the that track one to another V2 and it will not override? Mm. Or I will, I will need to cut it or what? It's, it's very flexible. It's very flexible. Let me bring in the clip again. Let me bring in the second clip. Now this is a self conflict. No. Are you with me, sir? Uh -huh. So let me even let me look for a third clip to come in. Let me look for a third clip. Ah. Uh. Um, I'm trying to lose my pen. Okay, if I can see, let me just use a picture. We have a picture folder here. Let me use a picture. Okay, so this is a picture. 
they should all start on the same on the timeline they are all on okay. the same they are all equal right yes okay so normally let me increase the size of this so that it will be Okay. Okay. So, so everything normally um uh, what we have on V3 is what we'll be showing. But in a case where I want my V1 to show first. It's very easy. I can just move all of this with my selection tool. I can reduce the size of this so that my V1 comes first. Yo, yo. Sir? My network is bad, so I... But are you seeing, are you seeing my screen? I can't, the thing is static. Yes, I'm seeing it. That's that today. Hello. 
Tell me any, please. Okay, sorry. Um, for the glitch, the network. I was struggling with the network. Okay, so as I was explaining, uh, let me make sure I'm recording this. As I was explaining before the interruption. So these are main clip. Okay. okay. So what we have on our V1 is our main clip that is telling the story. What we have on V2 and V3 are V roads just to support what the guy is saying. So I'm using my razor tool to cut. I'm using my razor tool to cut. So I said I want other clips to start showing after the guy have said filmmaker. So let's play it again. Filmmaker. So the filmmaker. So this is my razor tool. This is my razor tool. Placing it on the indicator, you can see it has splitted what we have here. It has splitted. It has splitted what we have on V2 and V1. So all you need to do is select what you have on V1 and V2. So normally in uh, when you are using other softwares or you are using your computer and you want to select multiple things, you press down the control key, right? But in Adobe Premiere Pro, you use Shift. So if I want to delete these two at the same time, I click on the one on V2, I hold down my Shift and click on the one on V3. Right click and clear. Sorry. And click on clear. Both are gone. You can use delete, you can use backspace, it's all the same. After, so my V1 is what is going to show up to this point, but I want you to come on V2 first, what I have on V2 before it goes to V3. So all I need to do is to cut these two. You see? So it's coming on this lady now, and coming back here. So in between here, yeah, I wanted to show what I have on V2. So I pick my result tool again. Cut. Then I come here. Cut what I have on V3, cut what I have on V2, because what I want to show is on V1. So depending on what you want to do, you can keep going on and on and on and on. I can come here and reduce this. So we have three tracks active on this video track, but from here it's only V1 that will be playing. But when it comes here to go to V2, and here is V3 that will play. When it comes here, it's V2 again, V3, V1, V3, and V2. So you can just keep playing with your results, you keep cutting, depending on what you want to show on your program monitor. Whatever shows on your program monitor is what you are going to have in your final work. There's no two way about it. So, Mr. Motosh, I hope I've answered your question. All right, so let's go back. I'm going to delete all of this. I want to make sure I've explained every basic thing on this timeline. So you can see on your video track, there is something like I. This is, if I click on this, 
Whatever I have on that track will disappear. It's like closing your eyes. Everything will become black. So this eye icon, if you put your mouse on it, it's showing toggle track outfits. When I click on it, everything is going to turn black. So for example, when we add multiple clips here, let me return them. All these clips, when we add them here, look at this picture. When I, if I come on this track and click on, it's going to hide it and show what is beneath. If I come to the second one too and click on the eye, it's going to hide it and show what is beneath it. So that's how it works. And then on the audio track, there is this M, you see M. When I click on it, you see it's highlighted on green. Anything that has to do with my audio will be muted. That means it will not play. Let me play it and you know, yesterday I showed us audio meters. This is your audio meters. If your audio meter, if you are working and your audio meter is not moving, that means your audio is not working or you have mistakenly muted it. So let me play it without meter and you see you see that here we start moving. Tell impactful stories. So these are your audio meters. So when, you, when you click on M, your audio meters will not move. That means it has been muted. So any number of audios you have here and the tracks, when you click on M, they become muted. So the timeline we assume that they were never there if you mute them. So that's the function of this eye icon on the video track and this M on the audio track. Those are the basic things on the timeline. Those are the basic things. What again? Um, my audio. On your audio, you can, in case, if your audio is low, you can increase the volume, like you can give it an audio gain by right clicking on the clip. And then don't forget, these other ones, we are not using the audios. They don't have audios. This, what we have on V2 and V3, is just the video and the picture. They don't have audio. But this one came with it. It has um, its own audio. That's why it's on V1 and A1. So let's imagine that this, my volume is low. And I want to add to the audio. I want it to be louder. All you need to do is right click. Then you look for audio gain. Look at it here. So you right click. This is audio gain. So let us add. You can either type in the figure you want. You can type in the figure you want. Or you come here and drag it. So let's add 5. Okay. Did you see any change? Now, let me increase it. Bro, this is loud on its own. It doesn't really need audio gain, but for the purpose of um, showing us. Now, on the audio, there is this little icon, FX. It's on ash color before. Look at it, it's on ash color. This very one here. When I click on my audio and I add the audio gain, it's going to turn to yellow, which means I've touched it. So let's add five and okay. Look at it, it has changed to yellow. It means I have touched it. Then look at the waves. Do you see some little changes on the waves? If we go up, let me undo that again. Do you see the difference? Now it's at this level. Now audio game, five. It's going to go up. So that's for adding on Tell back to stories. And if it is low, if it is too high, you can reduce it in the reverse way. Let's put minus five. That's if it's too loud. Tell back to stories. Tell back to stories. So that's that for the audio. 
Um, I will clear this now. So for the video track, you can increase your speed or reduce your speed. That's the concept of slow motion in videos. Slow motions or you want to you want the action to be very fast. All you need to do is to come on your video track. Let's use this video for example. Let me shift this. This video. See the way she just brought down her head, right? So let's make it slow motion. All you need to do is to right click on the clip. Yeah, it's speech stroke duration. What? Because why you why you reduce the speed? The duration is going to increase. If the video was five seconds and you reduce the speed, it will make it longer because the action will become slower. So that five seconds can become ten seconds or eight seconds. That's why it's called speed stroke duration. So the speed is at hundred percent. I want to reduce it so that it can be like a slow motion. Let's take it to 60% and see. So you see, the duration has increased. So let's play it now and see. It's now slow. But you don't just do slow motion. You don't just reduce the speed of your tweets if you've not shot it well. If you really want to do slow motion, when you are shooting, you should shoot at 60 frames per second in your camera, 60 frames per second and above. Now, this particular one was shot at 24 frames per second, and uh, reducing it to 60. Now, the slow motion is not smooth, it will drag, it must drag. There's no way you can do it. But okay, let's take it to like 70. If we ID, but it's not everybody that we know, it's just professional that we know. That this is not short for slow mo. They are just trying to manipulate it to be slow motion. You know, so that's for the for changing it to slow motion. So now let's make it fast. Making it fast, that means it's going to also reduce the duration. Let's take this to one fifty percent. It will reduce. So now it should be very fast than normal. Okay, let's try two hundred. This 200. So it's be very fast. So that's that's about speech. Speech. What is it? I've not explained on this chart in the video talk. Uh -huh. So yesterday we talked about when you are bringing in something from your source monitor like you are dragging a clip from here you can either bring video only audio only or both but while working on your timeline you know these two are moving together now they are together but i can split them when you right click you will see unlink you can unlink them why will you like to unlink them sometimes while editing a movie for example Network. Or oh, somebody's complaining on network. All right. So I can unlink. So I've unlinked it. That is why I can click on them independently. And I can link them back if I want. So both are moving together again. You can unlink. Why would you like to unlink? And uh, in in let me use movie editing to explain. In movie editing, there's what is called L and J cuts. That's L and J. So somebody, they have two people speaking to each other, and uh, I'm speaking with you. For example, they're having a conversation in a room. Instead of starting my conversation only when the camera is on me, immediately I finish speaking, saying my own part, 
and the camera wants to go to the other person. The other person's dialogue can start showing my own reaction first before going to the person's action. So this is how that is achieved. Um, let me bring in this again. Let's explain that. So let me, I will separate this to unleak it. So these two clips are supposed to come in after each other. So if I'm doing L and J, if I'm doing L and J, this is what I would do. I want, before I show her, my own conversation is still going on. So, because, but because I've um, unlinked, unlinked the video from the audio, I can cut the audio alone and the video will still be there. So, I can now move the two like this. So, the, look at the audio track. The two audios are independent. They are not climbing each other. Meanwhile, while this guy is still speaking, while I'm still speaking, the lady is already showing. Before we now come to our own part. So, I think our, our volume is very low. Let us increase it to 15. Let's see. Okay. Ask for stories. <laughs> So can we see the cuts? So this is what just happened here now. Let me remove this. So the video of this first one stops here while the audio continues while this other clip is already on. So that is why you might need to unlink your video from your audio to be flexible for you to just make them interwoven and make the whole thing interesting while editing. Okay. Okay, lastly for today. Lastly for today. Um like every other software, if you are working and you make a mistake, you can easily go on your control Z. If you take you back, if you undo whatever mistake you've made, or you can come here with this project panel side depending on how your workspace is arranged it can be anywhere now this this you can arrange your workspace anywhere you like if you like your source can be here your program can be here as long as you understand it's your you are in charge so now when you come here there is you see this tree okay those this is three this all the actions we've been performing since so when i control z now you see this stuff here moving up you see control z can you see it's going up moving back moving back moving back so if you are working you can easily come under it to, to see the things you have done so far maybe there's a mistake you can just easily come here and go back to the exact point where you made the mistake yeah. So that's to undo your history panel. So that will be all for today. We continue tomorrow by the grace of God. So before we go, let us take questions. Are there any questions? Anybody ask questions? If there are no questions, um, which part will uh, Mr. Motors or which part you need to get? Audio game. Oh, oh, it's not audio game. Oh. <laughs> Let me explain it again. It's audio game. So this is your audio on your. Okay, let me use this one. On your audio track, this is your audio, you right click. Yeah, Mr. Motosha, which one is the audio game? Or speed clip or the boat before I start talking.
Okay, let me explain the bit. Audio gain. When you right click on your audio, look at it says audio gain, not. Eh. Uh, yeah, I'm not talking. Okay. All right, you can speak, sir. Okay, sorry, it's because of the network, the audio yeah, where yeah. you has uh, effects to the for the fast forward and the slow motion. I didn't get that part okay. very well because of the network. Okay, sir. Let me do that again. So this is your audio track. On your audio track, you right click on your audio. Look at it here. Audio gain. You click on it. So you can either increase your audio gain or you reduce it here. Yeah. If it is too loud, all you need to do is put in minus any figure. But for this one, we want it to be loud. So just let's try 10. 10. So you can see that the waves has increased. So we successfully <laughs> added to the audio's gain. So let's say we want to reduce it. All we need to do is to impute minus whatever figure. And then it will come down again. Are we closer? Cool, and then for the speed, either you want to do slow motion or you want it to be fast forwarded, you come on the clip, click on the clip and right click. There is speed stroke duration. Because as you are reducing the speed, you are increasing the duration. And as you are increasing the speed, you are reducing the duration. So increasing this, uh, reducing the speed, you are putting it in slow motion. You are making it to be slower, which means the duration will be longer. And if you are increasing the speed, you are making the duration shorter. That is why it's called speed stroke duration. So if you want to reduce the speed, the speed is at 100% perfect. You reduce it, let's say 70%. Let's say 70%. You have reduced the speed. <laughs> so, Mr. Motor Shows, okay, I think you are still having network issue. All right, the recorded video we need available. And I believe if you from there, you'll be able to catch it. Uh, with this, we have come to the end of today's class. Thank you, everyone, for joining in tonight. Tomorrow, we'll try to work on a project. Maybe something like a one-minute thing. We'll see what we can learn from that. Okay, let us pray. Uh, Father, we thank you for the success of day two of this workshop. Thank you for insights. Thank you for inspiration. Thank you for the life of everyone that has joined from all over. Send your name be exalted in Jesus' name. Tomorrow being the final day, we ask, O oh God, that you grant us grace to learn more and share together in Jesus' name. Mm. Thank you, everybody. Good night. And have a good night first. <laughs>